This tutorial video is to get you started on the software, get your account set up, and set up some user accounts. First we're going to start in the account preferences page, and a couple things I want to take note of. Throughout the software there are these question mark icons, and if you hover over them, it will give you some text to the right that will give you some insight into that particular feature. So I encourage you to use those as you go through the, the account for the first time. Um, and in the future, if you run into some trouble, usually that's the most um, specific information to the task that you're trying to perform. Um, if you need some more general information, also note that there's a help file. Quick Start Guide is really good to jumpstart your, um, your use of the software. Um, if you're more of an advanced user, uh, there's some online help. And this online help actually has indexed information, so you can go through this. Uh, we try to keep it up to date. Um, if there's anything in there that, if there's a new feature that hasn't been added, you can always reach out to our support team. So switching back, um, the other help option is the video tutorials. And finally, you can always just reach out to us using the support tab. So the account preferences is where you start when you first sign up with an account. Um, and the first section here is how to attach social media accounts to your account. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that now. Let's add a Twitter account. I'm going to add our test account. All you need to do here is just enter your Twitter credentials and authorize the app. Click Authorize again, and that's it. Now you'll notice that this um, app has been, or this particular account has been added to our social monials account. Now, next time we publish to social media or launch a campaign, it will give us the option to add Rec Test Girl as um, a social media account to connect to and, and publish that message. If you want to remove a social media account, just click the red X. Another thing you can do is set up um, various accounts as defaults. So when I create a new publish to social uh, message, for example, and I want Rec Test Girl to show up every time, I would check this box. But if it, this is only an occasional account I use, you would deselect this. Notice the YouTube account. Um, this is mainly if you're going to be using any of the video functionality within Sociomonials. Um, you have the opportunity to add videos directly to your channel on YouTube. And the way you connect to that channel is by clicking Add Account and authorizing um, social monials to access that YouTube channel. Just note that you're going to be connecting with the account that owns the channel. So when you add the account's credentials, it's going to ask you which channel out of um, all the channels that um, that particular account owns you would like to use. So moving on to the next um, step here, Facebook has a, a little bit more of an advanced option here. The Rec Test Angel, this is another test account. You can have um, Facebook pages also added to your account. So I can select this as well and deselect the main account um, or just have the main account selected and not my page, business page. Um, LinkedIn, um, again, if I had a um, business page connected to this particular account, it would have a drop down box and allow me to connect to the business page as well. Or th they call it company pages in LinkedIn. Um, also, if I belong to any groups, Sociomonials allows me to publish to my groups as well. So any of those groups would also be shown as a drop down box um, and a default account option. So as we move down further, we have moderation settings. Um, standard is one click moderation. And what this means is when you start launching campaigns, you're going to have customers submitting photos, submitting videos, submitting text testimonials to their social accounts. And you have the opportunity to moderate those before they're syndicated to their social networks and your social networks. Um, the easiest is one click because the system will send you an email as the moderator and you click that button and approve it with one click. If you select standard moderation, it will require that you log in to the system using your login credentials every single time, and that can be a little tedious. Delayed automatic is the loosest of all the moderation options, and what this does is if you're out of town for a week, everything that comes in will send you an email and give you a one-hour warning, and if you do nothing within that hour, it will automatically post. Um, so it basically gives you a one-hour uh, window to delete the post. 
Moving on, we have analytics integration. Um, this is a very critical feature within the Social Monials platform because with our social suite, you're publishing social um, share buttons, you're uh, publishing campaigns, publishing messages directly to all the social accounts. Um, and when you do this, Social Monials is going to add this tracking code to every single link that you publish. And then it's going to shorten it into a nice, short, concise link for your customers. So the reason this, is, this step is really important is you want this to be dialed in so whatever analytics package you use is going to automatically be generating these really great detailed reports for you without you having to take any steps, without having to use Excel again to consolidate all of your different reports. Um, this should be completely automated if you do your job and set this up correctly from day one. Now, if you have Google Analytics, you're already done. The package comes um, ready with all of the source code for um, Google Analytics pre-configured. If you have something like um, Omniture, which is now called Adobe Analytics, um, or Site Catalyst, you will have to do some um, some modifying. And the way that works is, um, say for example, you want to use Omniture. I'm going to deselect all of this and delete it. Omniture has something like a campaign ID that you can use. Um, so you might want to say campaign ID equals, and you want to ins insert variable information. So what I can do is add a custom value, let's call it network. Now, if I publish this, what will happen is if, if I share something to Facebook and somebody clicks on that and buys something, it's going to attribute that revenue to Facebook because the link that is shared to Facebook by Socialmonials, it will actually insert CID equals Facebook into that uh, post. The link that it shares to Twitter on the same post will say CID equals Twitter. So it's going to be passing that information back to um, your Adobe Site Catalyst platform. So all of the reports you create will show where the revenue is coming from um, and on which social network. And the other custom values you can add are the source, uh, meaning um, like let's say it's a video contest you've created or a photo contest or even just a published social message. You can add the source and this variable field will insert that. The name is um, more of a detailed um, piece of reporting and what this would be, let's say you send a, po uh, a published message through the um, post to social feature. What all of this would show would be, for example, on the Facebook feed, it would say Facebook um, published social message and the name would actually be the first, I believe it's uh, 30 or 40 characters of your message followed by the date the message was sent. So your analytics package would allow you to drill down and see more and more detail into um, you know, where that revenue or click-through came from. You can always check the um, icon, and this gives you the exact information that would be shared. For example, network, um, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, and Facebook are the specific values that might show up based on those networks. This button allows you to get rid of shortening and tracking of all links um, if you live in, in a country that doesn't allow that. Conversion tracking code. Um, one thing that's unique about Socialmonials is we want to help you find out what your inbound marketing is doing for you. And this is usually a huge black hole in reporting for most um, social packages and other inbound marketing packages. So what you can do is copy this code just hit control C to copy this and then you're going to go and paste this into the source code of any one of the pages that is thanking customers for downloading a white paper or signing up for an email. Um, whatever you're using to capture a new lead for your sales force, um, once that form is submitted to download that um, your newest white paper or the email um, newsletter sign up, there's usually a thank you page that is presented to them. So that is the page you would want to uh, modify the source code, the HTML, and you just need to post, uh, paste this between the body tags. And um, your IT guy would know how to do that. Um, hopefully you have the ability to edit that page um, yourself and just paste it in right below the opening body tag, and that's it. 
once you save and, and uh, deploy that HTML, you will now be um, feeding this lead conversion data back to all of your reports. Now, if it's um, if you happen to notice that there is HTTPS up here in the browser area, um, which is unusual for a thank you page, but if it's a secure page, you'd want to check this box. And notice what it does here. It just adds HTTPS. It's not essential, but it will um, keep any um, messages from showing up saying that there's mixed content on the page. Um, that might um, dissuade your clients from, um, from continuing. So moving on, we have shopping cart order confirmation page code. Um, same thing, you would copy and paste this into your shopping cart thank you page. And if you also want to pass along revenue information, um, you would check this box, which says check before copying to activate revenue tracking. If you have a fixed price item that doesn't really need to um, pass revenue back, um, you wouldn't need to do that. It would just basically at that point be capturing the number of sales. But if you want to um, activate revenue tracking, click this box and you'll notice that this and revenue equals zero dollars and zero cents. This is where you would insert um, any variable code from your shopping cart software um, that would insert the dollar amount of the order that they placed. Again, if it's an HTTPS secure page, you would want to check this box and it will automatically reconfigure your code to include the proper secure um, code. Moving on, we have a profanity filter built, in, built into our um, social publishing tool. So you can always edit the keyword list and that um, might be fun for you and colleagues to look at. I'm not going to click it now. Um, and you can always add or remove words based on your locality. Uh, there might be some other things that people use uh, where you're using the software that aren't used elsewhere. And you want to make sure you capture that. If somebody, like let's say a sub user um, who's not an admin, if they try to post anything to social that contains any of those words, it will give them an error message and won't let them continue. Moving on, we have the default company share information. And what you'll want to do here is create just a default set of information about your company. Um, the reason for that is when you're posting to social and when you're creating a campaign and even when you're creating a share button, we always give you the option to check a box and use the default company share information. And that will automatically populate your um, share preview with this information. So the reason that's a big time saver is, let's say you just want to um, you know, share a quick image from a trade show that your company's involved in, and you don't want to go through the hassle of you know, coming up with a bunch of new um, share titles for Facebook and the share description. Um, you just want to post the image. You would be able to just check the box, and it would pre-populate the name of your company as the title and, um, and the description below with whatever you have here. So to do this, you would just click Browse and go find your, um, your image, preferably the logo of your company or some other image that represents you well, and um, enter in a company description that briefly describes your company. And you've got a character counter you'll want to make sure you don't exceed. And um, that's the extent of that. You can also add your privacy policy link to campaign entry forms. And this is very convenient because with one step, you can add the privacy policy to all of your forms. Um, instead of each time you create a form having to go and try to remember where your privacy policy page is located. So you'll want to go and locate uh, where, go to your home page. Usually there's a privacy policy link there somewhere. Go to that link and find out what the um, URL of that privacy page is and just paste it here. Depending on your account level, you may be able to add and manage users. To do this, click on Account Manage Users. This will show you all of the existing sub-users you have on the account. To create a new one, just click the New button. For the demo, let's just select Jane Jane. What we can do here is we can edit her um, details, we can delete her as a user, we can make her an administrator, and we can remove or add her as a moderator. Every account can only have one moderator, so if we select Jane Jane and um, add her as a moderator, then she would have the M next to her name, and it would be removed from wherever it was. The A makes her an administrator, and that means she has access to the account preferences, account settings, and the manage users section.
Only administrators have access to that. And each account can have unlimited administrators as long as they have um, that number of users available in their account. So let's go into Jane's account and edit her details. We could change her password, change her um, time zone, um, and the way Socialmonials works is we will adjust the local time for wherever they live. So if you have team members in Brazil and they schedule something for an hour from that moment in Brazil, uh, they don't need to figure out um, what the time is for their headquarters in Los Angeles where the account was set up. Um, they can set it for Brazil time and um, the system figures it out for them. You can also have it automatically adjust for daylight savings time, change the format of your dates, and permissions pertains to all of these links here on the side. If you have somebody um, whose only job is to publish to social, social media, you might choose to only give them access to that particular utility. So you can make all of these other buttons vanish when they log in. To do that, simply click Disabled by all of those other utilities. Now all she could do is publish to social media. Another thing I want to show you here is access customer information. Um, you may choose to disable for individuals who you want to view reports, but you don't want them to be able to export your entire customer list. So you might want to disable that for um, most of your users, except the ones that you want to be able to access that export feature. So going back into the publish to social media, even though this is enabled, we have some additional options. You can have those posts go out immediately, or you can hold the posts for approval by another user. So let's hold all of Jane Jane's um, posts until demo user 2 has approved them. Now every time she posts or schedules a post, it will send a message to demo user 2 asking them to view and approve that message. You can have it auto-approve after a certain number of minutes, um, depending on just how sensitive the information is that they're publishing to. Another thing you can do is limit the accounts that Jane has access to. So if this user only needs to access the Testyman Taylor accounts, you can only select the Testyman Taylor accounts. But maybe the Rec Test Girl accounts um, you know, belong to the CEO and you don't want her to be able to post to the CEO. Only the CEO's admin has access to those. And um, you, know, you can select the main account or any other sub accounts um, and business pages that belong to that account. So let's give um, Jane access to these and save this and log in as her just so I can show you what this looks like. So when Jane Jane logs in, things look a little different. The only thing she has access to is publishing to social media. And also notice that um, she only has certain accounts available to her. So if I click Add Accounts, only the Testyman Taylor accounts are showing up and the one Facebook page that is a sub-account of the Testyman Taylor Facebook page. So we can add these accounts or we can do something a little easier for her. If Jane Jane tends to post to these every time she posts to social media, Jane Jane can access this icon which gives her her personal settings and preferences. So what she can do now is all of the accounts that she has access to she can choose which one of those are default accounts. So I'm going to select these as defaults, as well as the main Facebook account. I'm going to se select my Mazatlan time zone for this particular user, her date format, and her default report view. Some people like to see just the numbers, some people like to see the entire chart, and she can also change her password for security. So now when she saves this and she goes back to publish to social media, notice that all of these accounts were selected by default.